a very good morning student yesterday we learn about the fact that the what are the parts of a living long bone today we will go further i will tell you about okay, about the bone itself the bone is similar to an organ of the body as you have uh, seen that there are many organs in our body the liver the kidney the spleen intestine and so on and these organs they are made up of multiple tissues as we have seen that there are four basic tissues of the body epithelial tissue connective tissue and in connective tissue we have seen that there are the specialized connective tissue like the cartilage and bones also third connective i mean say the basic tissue of the body we learn is that muscular tissue and fourth is the nervous tissue so our organs our body our system they are made up of all these four basic tissue so we will see that the bone is like an organ of the body okay it is an organ just like any other organ because it is also made up of multiple tissues of our body the basic tissues of our body so our bones they behave like an organ okay let us see how they behave like an organ if we see the bone it is similar to an organ it is similar to that of a of an organ because if you take an example of the small intestine okay which you have learned in your school days in your lower classes that's why i'm taking this example it is made up of multiple layers you have seen that the intestine if you cut a transverse section will be outermost layer is serosa which is an example of the basic con connective tissue that is the dense connective tissue okay then after serosa there will be the muscular layers outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle which is made up of the smooth muscle so this is the second basic tissue of our body then you go to the submucosa which is made up of the moderately dense connective tissue hmm? then muscularis mucosae again the muscle tissue lamina propria the loose connective tissue and then finally when you go towards the liver of the intestine it is lined by the epithelium okay which is epithelial connect i mean say tissue epithelial tissues of the body and in between the muscles and in some mucosa there is presence of the myentric and the mesner's nerve plexus and enteric neurons are also there okay so all the types of the basic tissues of the body are present in an intestine does it match an organ in the similar way the bone is an also organ because it is also made up of the different uh, types of the basic tissues of our body for example if we see here it is made up of the <coughs> is having the cartilage okay on the surface where i have told you yesterday that where it articulates with the other bone or forms a joint there is presence of a cartilage so it is made up of the cartilage so this is the cartilage uh, is here okay both at the ends which is called as the uh, i mean to say the articular cartilage articular cartilage then the bone we have seen that it is covered by a membranous structure which we have seen that it is called as the periosteum all those part of the bones they are covered by a membranous structure the periosteum which are not covered by the i mean say area which are not covered by the articular cartilage so this is called as periosteum okay so this is another type of the tissue okay again the connective tissue again the connective tissue is there then if you see the internal structure of this bone let me draw the internal structure or the bone marrow the end or the epiphysis which is made up of the spongy bone okay with both the ends and then it is made up of the compact bone here okay. very roughly i will draw this compact bone is here okay and this deep inside this marrow cavity it is lined by an another structure 
which is an N uh, epithelial lining, a membranous epithelial lining is here, which is covering to the marrow cavity and to the space. And this is not the periosteum, but this is called as endosteum. This is called as endosteum. So this is an, another type of the epithelial tissue is here, which is forming the endosteum. Now, then this is also having the various other structure, like that it is having the blood vessels and all. So this is the bone is supplied with the nerves, which are sensory nerves here mostly, and then this is also supplied by the blood vessels, the veins, the arteries. They are just going through the nutrient foramina inside and then they divide. Okay, so there is the presence of the arteries, there is the presence of the nerve, and then we had seen yesterday that the epiphysis, the spongy bone at the ends, it is having the red bone marrow, and in an adult's living bone, the marrow cavity is occupied by the bone marrow. And bone marrow is made up of the fatty tissue as well as it is made up of the tissue which ultimately give rise to the blood, okay, blood cells, various kind of the blood cells, they are forming the red bone marrow. So, you will see that bone is not a simple tissue, that is bony tissue, specialized connected tissue. But there are multiple other type of the tissues are there, there is nervous tissue, there is muscular, I mean say, there is a fibrous tissue is there, there is a hemopoietic or bone farming, there is a cartilage is there, there is the epithelial lining in the endometri, I mean say, in the endosteum is there, in the endosteum. So multiple type of the tissues are present in the bone. Hence, this proves that bone is not a simple structure, it acts like an organ, it acts like. Now, for any other organ, say for I have given the example you uh, to you about the intestine, which is an organ similar to that of our body, it consists of many types of bone, long bone, short bone, regular, irregular bone, flat bone, uh, pneumatic bone and so many which you must have learned in the general anatomy lecture here, okay. They all are the living bones and they all act like an organ, okay, they're like an organ. Similar to the intestine which has an function organ, uh, which is an organ and it has the function of the absorption and digestion, okay. Similar the bone tissue, I mean say bone as a, is also as an organ because it also has many functions. Let us see what are the functions of the bone. Bone is a protective structure, it protects the delicate uh, organs, other organs of body, say for example, bones of our cranial cavity or skull, it protects our brain, the rib cage of the thorax, protect of our lungs as well as the heart and then other bones, they are for the limb bones, they are used for the locomotion. We I mean, say we can walk, we can run, we can jump with the help of our bones and the muscular system and that is forms ultimately the locomotive system, okay. Then bones are having other function. As I said that the red bone marrows and the end of a living bone, they produce the bone, say, I mean, they produce the blood cells, okay. Various blood cells are produced in this hemopoietic tissue which is called the bone marrow, red bone marrow. The yellow bone marrow is a site for deposition of an another tissue called as the adipose tissue or that of the fat. By in this uh, compact bone of the uh, sac, there is deposition of calcium. So it is the big storehouse of the calcium from where calcium is directly circulating to the blood and if it is more, blood level is more, it is coming and depositing into the bone. So there are multiple uh, functions of a bone. A bone uh, has a lot of function. As I said you in yesterday's video, it is the important function is to give the shape to the body. Okay, it forms the skeletal framework. Now, if the bone has this man is like an organ if it is having lot of function consisting of various types of the tissue 
then question comes does it has a dynamicity or it is the tissue which is responding to the various factors okay yes like any other organ of the body say for example our example is on intestine as you know that the epithelial lining of the intestine keeps on changing every week similarly the bone is not showing that fast changes but the compact bone of the sac of the this body or sac of the body the compact bone here it also is renewed that means the old compact bone is replaced by the new compact bone gradually and this process of replacing the old bone with that of the new bone is called as remodeling so there is a process in the bone which is continuously going on okay and that is called as remodeling that means whatsoever bone you see here today after a year it will not be there it will be replaced by uh, some new bone and by the process of the remodeling so the bone is not just a uh, i mean to say resting organ it is a dynamic organ also it is not only organ but it is dynamic organ because it keeps on changing it keeps on i mean say the internal bony tissues which you will learn later that it is made up of the osteon or haversian system they keep on changing they keep on so bone is continuously i mean to say newly formed it is formed new it is formed new now when i am saying so many things about a living bone about a living bone and the bones which you handle here in your class are which you are soon going to handle all these bones they are also the bones okay but as i said yesterday that they are not the living bone they are the dead dry bones they are the dead dry bones which have been taken out from the human bodies after the day okay after the day and we are using this bone we though we are using this dead and dry bone but hmm, you should always think in your mind that these bones are living bones okay though they are dead they are living bone as i told you that in the introductory classes of general anatomy though you are dissecting on a dead person but in your mind there should be always a living person you should think of a living person because ultimately you are going to use this knowledge of anatomy not on a dead person you are going to use this knowledge on a living person itself okay so that should be there now let us very quickly see if i am all the time in last video i am telling that it is a living bone it is a living bone then i am showing you a dead bone so what are the differences between a living bone and that of a dead bone if you just see the differences between a living bone and that of a dead bone here if i draw and another the picture of a tibia here and this will compare that what is say for example this is a living bone because it has the blood vessels it has a nerve it has a periosteum it has a cartilage so a dry bone will not be having the cartilage so there is no cartilage see here at the end of this tibia you are seeing the articular area but it is not covered by the articular cartilage so don't try to find out the cartilage when you are handling a bone in your classroom okay because that cartilage which is for example of a specialized connective tissue it dries up and falls out that's why these are called as the dry bone dry dead bone so there will be no cartilage so there will be no cartilage in a dead bone or a dry bone in the similar way the periosteum which is a fibrous membrane in a living bone will also gets dried and fall off there will be no periosteum covering to the non articular areas of so don't try to find out a periosteum which will be covering to there is no periosteum in your classroom bones okay dry dead bone so there will be no periosteum also here to cover it then there will be no endosteum suppose there will be this spongy bone if we cut a section here this is the compact bone here okay and then 
this is the spongy bone, there will be no elastium either lining to the spaces of the spongy bone or to the inner aspect of the compact bone lining to the bone marrow cavity, okay, to the cavity. So there is no endosteum which was because it is a very delicate during the drying process all these tissues which are living tissue membranous structures or cartilage they fall off and then you will not be able to see here even if you got a section transfer section of this bone you will not be able. Similarly you will be not be able to see the bone marrow because the red guru or that of the yellow man here will be the red marrow at the ends and in the center there will be the yellow bone marrow will be there okay it both yellow as well as red will not be there in this dry bone because mostly a part of this bone marrow it is made up of adipose tissue which is fat and that's gradually drains up during the drying process after the brief okay when the bone is taken out from the body and kept for the drying so all this they drain out so there will be no red marrow there will be no you know, so don't try to find out the marrow inside the cavity, okay, marrow cavity. So there will be no blood vessels and no nerves, okay. Similarly, this will be nerve and the blood vessels, they are also not present here into the bone. So don't try to find out the vein, artery or that of the nerve, they are not there. You will see only some foramina at the ends, which I said that through which the blood vessels and now and a nutrient foramina here, which is seen here, where it is for the uh, blood vessels and nerves. Okay, they will go inside the marrow cavity and then will divide and will go towards the end. This will not be there. So this is the major differences between a dry bone. So in your mind, there should be nothing which I have taught you in the previous video that a bone living bone is covered by this it has a blood supply it has a nerve supply it has a bone marrow it is a dynamic tissue and it is constantly being destroyed and formed there is nothing like that a dry bone is entirely different but in your mind there should always be a picture of a living bone okay with of a living bone thank you very much i hope that what i want to say you is that you know, that you should think of a living bone while you are studying, okay, not of a dry bone, though we are using the dry bone in our classroom. Thank you very much for watching this video.